All right, Jesse on fire, welcome back. Look at my studio, look at that. He's back, he's home. So he's at his home studio, much better setup. Good for him. All right, so what are we gonna talk about today? As I'm, I always say that as if like you guys didn't see the thumbnail and didn't see the title, as if you don't know what we're gonna talk about. But the reality is if you follow my content pretty closely, generally I give like a pretty broad topic and then I sprawl into a ton of stuff. And my goodness, you guys have no idea. Like I took no, you know, I always like like write down little notes of like videos I want to do. I got the uh, I got the Feely versus you know Mitchell. I got the Hall and Silva, Dustin Poirier and Connor being done. Khabib still the champ. Cheeto versus Aldo, Jan versus Israel. I got all kinds of stuff to talk about. But this particular video, this is about Habib and Connor because guess what? I am going to make a hypothesis that I feel very strongly about. Okay very strongly about and my hypothesis now is that we're not looking at habib versus gsp we're not looking at habib versus ferguson what we're looking at for his 30 and 0 is going to be the connor rematch and i feel pretty confident about that and if you guys i i believe me let me just address you the, the dissenters in advance okay i know that habib said he won't fight connor again i know that i know and even in in the, in the cage he said I'm not interested in fighting either Dustin or Connor. I choked them both out. I know that, okay? I understand that. But also what I think that people don't understand about Habib that I understand is underneath that very, very icy, icy exterior, there is a ball of passion under there. He is a passionate, passionate guy. So there's two ways that people make statements that they either live by or don't live by, okay? You've got principles and you've got passion, right? You've got logic, principles, passion, okay? So you need to look at where something lives to know whether or not a person like Beeb is going to actually stick by what he says, right? If it's in principles, he's not gonna break it. He's just not gonna break it. If he says, I, I live this way, it's a principles category, he's never gonna break it, absolutely never, okay? Logic, he's movable there. You can maybe sway his opinion based on logic, okay? Well, look at it like this, huh? Look at it like this, right? He'll have a conversation with you because he's a person who has conversations and he, he does change his mind. Passion is shit he just says, okay? Shit he just says. And people confuse things he says over here in passion for things that live in principle, okay? And that's not the same thing. He's never gonna break principles. He's never gonna break anything related to his faith. He's never gonna break anything related to his family. Okay, and I understand that's why people heard what he said. And he said, my mother asked me not to fight and I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna fight without my father. And people are like, well, that's, that lives in principles. And I'm like, nah, no, that doesn't live in principles because, well, no, 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 I take that back. If his mom stuck with it and she was like, I never want you to fight ever again. I never want, I can't, I can't deal with it. I will implode implodes the wrong word just i can't handle it like i really genuinely if she stuck to her guns then yeah that would live in principles and i don't think he would i don't think he would go against her what i'm saying is i think that she's talking out of grief and that he's going to be able to talk to her and say but i really want to fight and i think she's going to say okay and she's going to give him permission and then all of a sudden that comes out of principles and goes in the other category of either logic or passion and he can he can change his mind on those things and i would imagine he's already having those conversations with her right he's already he knew like going into that you gotta understand going into that fight man it think about what he was going through he literally said he was training to distract himself from the grief he was going through and he in his mind he's like i'm gonna win this fight for my father and then i'm gonna let all this shit out right and i actually was watching that again and i think that I think that's what his plan was, was I'm gonna bury these feelings, I'm gonna bury myself in my training, and then when I win, you know, I'm gonna let it all out. And what I saw in the octagon when I watched it back was him trying to let it all out and kind of not being able to, you know? Like I think Khabib, Habib is the kind of person who's able to lock those feelings away so tight and focus on goals and training that it's not like if you're wired like that your entire life and i can absolutely relate to this part of his personality if you are wired like that for everything where you just negative feelings or like you know things like that and you just lock them away you can't just let them out on command no matter what even if you're like i'm gonna win this for my father and then afterwards i'm gonna let this all out you win and then you're like all right i'm gonna let it out 
and it just doesn't happen, right? It just doesn't happen. You try because you want to, but it doesn't. That's what I saw was a guy like, I just think he's, he is a, he's a, and I mean this like he's a fucking gangster, man. He's a gangster. And so that kind of stuff, dude, men, you lock that shit away sometimes. And even when you want to let it out, it's hard, right? And so I don't really know what the point of that part was. Just to say this. If his mom gives him permission, which she will, he'll come back and fight, okay? So, and here's here's the deal, right? So now let's talk about what we're actually talking about, right? Who is going to really dictate who Khabib fights? Khabib fights. Dana, okay? Dana is going to dictate who he fights. And here's the deal. Obviously, everyone wants to see GSP and Habib, right? Everyone wants to see that fight. I want to see that fight. But I want to see Connor fight him more. And I'll just be honest about that. I would be I the spe- I love the fucking spectacle. I love it. I fucking love it. I fucking love it. The reason why I have this channel, the reason why I take all this time and do this ch- is, you know, aside from just trying to make my, you know, my my gig speaking into a camera cuz it just feels like the thing that I should probably do for money. Outside of that, the reason why I'm doing this particular topic is because I fucking love it. I love it. And I love the spectacle. I love it. I love that Colby and Masvidal are going to fight each other after pretending to hate each other for five years. I fucking love it. I'll, buy, I'll, pretend, I'll pretend I'm not this smart and I will buy in. I'll pretend that I didn't see that. Oh, wait, so... Colby had a relationship with Trump, and now all of a sudden, Masvidal is campaigning with Trump. But I thought they hate each other. Like, I wonder how he made that relationship. I'll just, pre- I'll just, look. You know, when it comes to the fight, like, oh yeah, no, there's. I'll just ignore all the evidence, and I'll buy into the spectacle because I fucking love the spectacle. I love it. Okay, and with Connor and Habib, the spectacle is real. And I'm going to be honest with you guys. Over the last month of really focusing so heavy on Habib. He's my favorite. He he and Connor are my two favorite fighters. Like they there's there's these two and then there's everyone else. And I can't root, I won't be able to root against either of them. I'll tell you that right now. But anyway, let me tell you why I'm correct about this is the fight that that we're working towards. Not GSP, we're working for, towards the Connor rematch. What it comes down to is what Dana wants. And I want you to go back and you watch. Now that I'm sorry, I'm missing context. Connor and Dustin is now official, okay? Connor and Dustin is now booked. As a, it's January 23rd, that fight is happening, it's official, okay? Now that happened two days ago. That also happened coinciding with Dana talking to Habib and saying, eh, I think he's gonna come back for 30 and 0. And then on the, in, his, in the post-fight press conference last night, he was very confident about that. He, like, he, he's, he, would look, he, he wasn't like, well, we'll see what happens. He was like, he's gonna come back. And he said, Habib still has the belt. He's not retired, he still has the belt. We're not taking the belt. There's no vacant belt. He's still holding it. Blah, blah. Like, Habib's coming back. Habib's coming back. Okay? Plain and simple, he's coming back. And I'm telling you, go watch the post-fight press conference from the Cowboy fight when Connor fought Cowboy and go watch Dana, okay? Now, Dana is a passion guy. The reason why the UFC got to where he it is is because it's a it's an explosion of Dana's passion that lasted over 30 fucking years or however long he's been doing this, okay? So, like... You have to understand that when he actually, you know, he's seen every fight. He's seen all these things. If he gets passionate about a fight, that's different, okay? That's different. It's not the same thing as like, oh, we're going to have Israel go up and fight Yan Blakovich. Like, of course, yeah, that's exciting. I'd love to see, you know, I'd love to see Israel fight Yan Blakovich, of course. You know, or yeah, like uh, John Jones moving up to heavyweight. Yeah, yeah, I think we're going to try to book that, whatever. Any fight that seems like it should be a monumental fight, go watch Dana talk about it and watch how monotone he is, Okay. Then go watch him talk about the Connor and Habib rematch after the Cowboy fight. Okay, that's a it's a different fucking tone. It's a different deal. You can see his energy. He's like, oh no, that's the fight to make. Like we're making this fight, and th- and Dana is a fucking. This is why I I like, you know I haven't talked about it a lot recently on the channel, but the reason why Dana like why literally like my fucking dream would be to go work for Dana in any capacity because I look at him and I see. All I see, anyway, if he wants to get something done, he's going to fucking get it done. That's why also you talk about him, you know, you say like, what's the fight that got away that that, that you really wish happened? He'll talk about the Fedor and Brock Lesnar fight and how the idiots that were managing Fedor wouldn't make the fight and look at his face still get red 15 years later that they that they didn't take that fucking fight. He's like, those fucking idiots. They made, they made the biggest mistake. Like the UFC is worth $8 
billion dollars now. He's won in every category. There is no fucking metric that he has not annihilated whatever anybody thought he was going to be able to do. And he talks about that fight and he gets mad. He gets real mad that they wouldn't make that fight because he was passionate about making that fight. And I'm telling you, Connor and Habib too is in that category. Okay. He wants that fight. He wants that fight fucking bad. He wants that fight bad. And if he wants it bad, he's going to make it happen. Okay. Because at the end of the day, this is the other thing you need to keep in mind, right? So, like like we discussed, I just laid it out. Why Habib is going to be movable. He's going to come back, right? Do you understand what these guys owe Dana White? Like, do you understand what Habib owes Dana White? Do you understand what Connor owes Dana White? Like, these guys are, like, Habib's worth $100 million now. Connor's worth, <laughs> whatever, $400 million. That is all because of Dana, Right? That is all because Dana built this sport and then built them up as stars and let them fight the fights. Like Dana, they they know that. You know, they know that. And and Dana treats these guys with respect. Like I'm telling you, that that feeling of gratitude, if Dana really wants it, I mean he's gonna again, he's gonna have to get permission from his mom. He's not gonna go against his mom. But if Connor knocks out Dustin Poirier, fucking bet that. Fucking bet. Bet that 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 is that that's the fight that's happening. Bet that. Okay, when have I been wrong? Okay, I've been doing this long enough now. This this YouTube channel is what like a uh, little over six months. I've made some pretty outlandish claims. When have I been wrong? I'm not talking about like who's gonna win a fight. I'm talking about this. I'm talking about the fucking business. When I say talk about the business, when have I been wrong? When have I been wrong? Never. I don't know, actually. Maybe, you know, throw it in the comments if you think I made some outlandish claim that I was wrong about. But this one, I'm right. This one, I'm right. But again, if they book GSP, I'll be excited. You know, I'll be as excited for a GSP versus Habib fight as I was for Gaethje versus Habib. If it's Connor versus Habib, I'm not going to be able to fucking breathe for two weeks before that fight. I won't sleep for three days before that fight. I'll do a hundred fucking videos leading up to that fight because I will have so many thoughts in my mind. I'm going to need to vomit them out and get them on wax like... Okay, and everybody's gonna and and this is the thing. What's so crazy is going into the last one, I was fucking all rooting for Connor for sure because I love Connor. And since then, I, I dude, I love the. They are my two favorite fighters. I can't root against either of them. But the spectacle, man, the fucking spectacle of it. If anybody doesn't understand why that is the fight that we should be rooting for, then you're out of your mind. And you know who knows that? Fucking Dana knows that. Dana knows that. And that's why that's the fight that's going to get made. I mean, Connor still has to get through Dustin Poirier, okay? If he loses Dustin Poirier, then <laughs> that might be the factor, okay? So I will bet you that Habib does not get a fight booked prior to that fight. That I will fucking guarantee. That I will guarantee. Because if they've only got one more fight with Habib, I mean, listen, if Habib puts his foot down and he's like, I only want to fight GSP, Okay, then you have to, then there's this other whole thing, right? There's this other whole thing to consider, which is this. GSP, his team is very honest with him, okay? GSP in his prime is a monster challenge. Monster challenge. That a lot of people might even be right in picking to win, potentially. I mean, I don't know. I'm not saying that I, I would pick him to win. I'm just saying lots of people would pick GSP to win against him in his prime. But he's not as, you know, he's older, and everybody just assumes that that means he slowed down. What I'm saying is if he has slowed down, then his team's going to tell him. They're going to be like, look, dude, there, there's nothing to gain by coming back and getting your ass kicked, unless you need the money. I mean, you know, everybody can use $10 million. But in terms of like your legacy and whatever, there's nothing to gain by coming back and getting the shit kicked out of you by this undefeated Russian who's never lost a fucking round, right? And I'm telling you, you have slowed down. Like you're, you're, you're a hair slower than you were before. And this would be by far the best fighter you've ever fought. So you need to be in your prime. So like I'm saying, if that if he has slowed down even at all, his team will tell him. So I'm saying that the GSP fight might not even necessarily be available. You know, the Tony fight's there. And it's possible Habib just wants to clear out the division. And and But I'm telling you, Dana is going to fight absolutely to... Dan, he's not... He might not be saying it to Habib now. He's a genius, okay? Dana's a fucking genius. And I will tell you right now, he might not have said it to Habib, but what he's driving towards is the Conor rematch. Fucking guaranteed. Fucking guaranteed. As confidently as I have ever told you anything on this channel, that I am absolutely positive about. Okay? That's what's going on. So, 
That's what's probably going to happen because, like I said, if you're picking Dustin to beat Connor, you are biased and out of your fucking mind. Okay? He might, who knows? Dustin might surprise me. But I feel almost laughably confident that Connor's going to run through Dustin. I don't think people realize how good Connor's going to be. Okay? Like, that's the thing that people don't understand. They look at, they're like, oh, Connor fought Floyd Mayweather and lost. Right? That's how people look at this. So, Connor fought Floyd Mayweather and he lost. So, that shows that he has weak blah, 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 right? That's, and oh, you know, Connor's lost to Habib, which shows that he has weak blah, blah, blah. And what I'm saying is that's the opposite of how you should look at it. What it showed Connor is where he needs to improve. And then if you actually watch him boxing and then you compare it now, like watch him boxing now and compare it to when he fought Floyd and you're like, oh wow, he's made dramatic improvements, dramatic improvements in the way, in the areas where he was weak. Okay, and then he fought Cowboy and he ran through him in Insto. So no one has seen him and he's been training this whole time. Okay, his whole time. His team is like, you guys have no fucking idea how good he is now, right? You have no fucking idea how good he is. He lost, in my opinion, once legitimately in MMA. Okay, the Nate Diaz thing is not real. He took it on two weeks notice, two weight classes up, doesn't count. He lost to Habib in the UFC and that's it. And we know Habib's the fucking greatest fighter of all time. Okay, if you think that Connor is, if you think that Dustin's gonna beat Connor, I'm telling you, you, you're. It's the same. I mean, I think Dustin has an equal chance of beating Habib as he does of beating Connor. Honestly, that's how that. I mean, because now Dustin, now you've got to talk about matchups, man. You're talking about Dustin fighting Connor, and he's going to stand with him. Okay, that is like that's like here. Hey, Habib, go fight someone on the ground. Right? I'm serious. Connor on his feet, someone that he knows is not going to try to take him down, is as dominant on his feet as Habib is on the ground. Period. Period. If you're picking dust in that fight, you're out of your fucking mind. I had this conversation with a dozen, 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 dozens of people before the cowboy fight. That was before I started this channel, but I told fucking everyone. I was like, dude, I'm taking cowboy. It's plus 270. I was like, I took Connor to win by knockout in the first round. And I feel so confident in my bet that it's almost laughable. Okay. And I mean, I believe me, you, if you think I don't have the, I'll show you the screenshots. Okay. Like with th that is just an objective fact. I, you know what? Any of the guys that are on the text message thread that I was having this conversation with all the pussy dragons, which is what I, <laughs> that's the name of the thread. There's a dozen guys in there. And I, I told all of them, because lots of them bet on Cowboy. I was like, you guys are out of your fucking minds. Connor's going to win by first round knockout. And here's my betting slip. So, anyway, I have a tremendous history of betting on Connor correctly. Like, a tremendous history of betting on Connor correctly. I bet on Nate Diaz to win the first fight. And then I bet on Connor to win the second fight. And I've, I've literally got, I've got every single one of Connor's fights right. Every single one. I bet on Khabib. I said Khabib. I don't I actually don't know if I bet on that fight. I just but I said Khabib was probably going to win. Anyway, um, that's what I've got. Subscribe, ring the bell, 